Hi, my name is Vito and uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about the GDPR laws. Uh, if you run a website and you're collecting data on uh, citizens of the EU, um, this video is for you. I'm going to break it down how to uh, make your WordPress website or basically any website uh, compliant with the new GDPR laws. Just bear in mind that uh, I'm not a lawyer and this is not legal advice. Uh, these are just a few steps that you can take uh, in order to make your website compliant. Uh, but there's a few other things that you need to make sure that you're still doing within your business uh, to make sure you're totally GDPR compliant. But I'm gonna tackle the website side. So first let's understand why we need the GDPR laws. It's a new law that is coming into effect uh, on the 20th of uh, May. It's actually a very positive thing. Um, the privacy laws hasn't been updated since the 90s and technology has grown massively since then and we're using the internet in a different way than we did uh, back then especially in the last few years with the rise of social media and everything we can see that we feel that uh, our information might be exploited and might be might not be used in a way that uh, that benefits us and that's why the regulators uh, came uh, came with these laws and um, as website owners, we need to comply with them or else we can be fined up to 20 million euros, which is, sounds, like, sounds crazy, but they seem pretty adamant at, uh, at enforcing this. So we should take action and you should take action within your business. So the first thing we need is an SSL on the website, which is a security certificate. It pretty much encrypts your website. If it's done correctly, you're gonna see uh, Google's uh, green padlock on the, uh, if you're browsing on Chrome. And this is basically an, uh, a notice to the visitor that the website is secure. And also it's kind of a reassurance that uh, we actually take notice and take care of their uh, privacy. The second thing we need to take care of is updating our terms and conditions, our privacy policy, and our cookies policy. And we need to have this on every website. It's gonna help you with Google as well when uh, they scan the website and uh, they'll find these pages. It's gonna help uh, rank you up a little, a little better. The SSL as well. And um, this is something that you can generate online. I'm gonna put a link uh, right here below to somewhere that, uh, to a place we recommend and it's GDPR compliant. And it's basically gonna ask you a few questions and generate the terms and condition or the, the legal document for you. Um, it's a much cheaper solution than uh, going to a proper lawyer and doing it. But if you have a complex website, maybe you should uh, um, have a look at um, a specializing lawyer to take care of these things. So number three, forms. Uh, this is a pretty big point uh, because uh, forms are the way that uh, we're collecting data online, um, whether it be someone that is subscribing to your newsletter or uh, requesting some information for a quote or someone making a purchase online, we collect their information through forms. And it's very important that we ask for consent to use this information and now it's actually mandatory. So you need to make sure that at the end of every form you have a little checkbox that, uh, that is clearly telling people how you're going to use this information and uh, why you need this form. Uh, make sure that this checkbox is ticked off by default, it's very important that the consent is going to be an active consent, that people actually click on it to uh, opt into your list or uh, whatever. Something else about the forms, we need to have a way to present this information back to our users if they ask for it. So people can now claim their information or ask for their information uh, and we need to be ready to deliver the information from where it's stored um, with everything that is, uh, that is included in it. Um, to do this, we're using Gravity Form, which is a very, very nice uh, uh, form system uh, for WordPress. And uh, it's not that expensive and it collects your information in a very, very nice and organized way that you can always export it and you can always know where these people uh, came from. Uh, and it will allow you to do all of these things, including the checkbox for the consent and uh, everything. Um, one last thing about forms, and it's important that, uh, uh, that we take, think about this now before the, the law comes into effect. Um, we need to remove any information that we're not actively using. Uh, part, of the, part of the rules are, are uh, to making sure that we don't keep information just in case, you know? So if you have these kind of people stored from a few years ago, uh, that uh, that you were thinking, yeah, maybe someday I'm gonna get in touch with them and send them uh, some kind of a promotion or something, then you can't do that past the 20th of this month. Uh, so make sure you delete all of their information. 
So we're already at point number four. Um, we need to re-ask everyone for their consent. So if you haven't done this or you can't prove that you can uh, deliver information to a certain contact, you need to re-ask them for consent. Uh, you can easily do that with, with free tools like MailChimp or any kind of a, a newsletter software uh, that will resend them information to, resend them an email asking for consent where they will take it on and uh, then you can uh, continue communicating with this person. Last point, point number five, maintain your website. Um, as a website owner, we have a responsibility to keep upgrade, updating the website and making sure that no one can actually break in and steal other people's information. It's pretty much the same way like you would have insurance on your shop if you have a brick and mortar shop or an office, you would have insurance about everything in there, as well as uh, some kind of a security measures, maybe an alarm system, maybe a CCTV. It's pretty much the same way about websites right now. The, uh, the legislator is looking at a website as, as an actual office or an actual shop, and we should look at this in the same way. The same responsibility is now being rolled on to the online world, to the digital world, and, uh, and that includes maintaining our website, which means that we need to keep updating all of the software. Uh, where if, it's, if it's within WordPress, we need to update WordPress, update the themes and the plugins. Uh, we need to make sure that we have uh, a proper security system in place, kind of like an antivirus for websites. Um, we need to uh, delete all, of ki all kinds of uh, threats that are coming on to the website. We need to deter all kinds of spammers that want to steal information from uh, our websites. Uh, so you need to find someone that can maintain the website on a regular basis, on a monthly basis, because if if it comes to it to this and uh, you are being questions about how are you maintaining people's information you need to have a point where you can prove that you're taking actual measures to ensure people's uh, privacy on your website all right we did it uh, we went through the five points to make sure your website is compliant with the new gdpr laws and um, just so you know we can take care of uh, almost all of these things for you whether it be maintaining the website on a regular basis uh, which you should find uh, someone to do for, for your website, um, installing an SSL, a, a security certificate, um, making sure your terms and conditions and cookie policies are up to date, and of course, checking, uh, checking your forms and making sure that everything there is uh, up to speed with the new uh, regulations. Uh, so I hope this was uh, informative and uh, get in touch with us below if you need any help with these things, and good luck.